Plus, sneak peeks at what's coming next. With so much going on in the world of daytime, it's easy to miss a story or two, including some of the biggest ones unfolding on screen. Fortunately, we've got you covered with our guide to everything that went down last week on Days of Our Lives, General Hospital, The Bold and the Beautiful and The Young and the Restless. Plus, we've got previews of what to expect next and even coverage of Primetime's best sensors. The Bold and the Beautiful tragedy is headed to Bold and Beautiful this fall, and it's got Carter's name written all over it. His whole world is about to be turned on its head, and that can only mean one, horrible thing for him. We've got the most shocking scandal since Sheila's toe on hand, er, foot, and its initials are C. P.S. You won't believe what we think really happened. A new Big Brother winner has been crowned, which, Krista Allen, Taylor, teases, may mean we're about to be joined by a new face on Bold and Beautiful. It's time to shake things, and more importantly, couples, up with the return no one was expecting, well, almost no one. All good things must come to an end, which unfortunately means the cast of Bold and Beautiful had to say a difficult goodbye. Apparently, Bold and Beautiful really, really wanted to get to Aspen, because as Richard notes in his column, this week's episodes went into hyperdrive. For a moment there, it looked as if Taylor had finally come to her senses, but rest assured, Steffi was there to make sure her mom didn't lose sight of her rich obsession. What went down last week? Deacon met with Genoa City's Nikki Newman to give her info on a mutual acquaintance and Sheila came face to face with the socialite. But Nikki didn't recognize her in her disguise. While Steffi kept pushing for her parents to reunite, Brooke paid Thomas a visit and was appalled when he used a knife to cut an apple in front of Douglas. She later told Ridge she'd call CPS on his son if she had to. Cue CPS knocking at the door of the Forrester mansion. Rich assumed his wife was responsible, but she denied it. In other news, Taylor decided not to fight for Rich and Steffi agreed to take her to Bill's house in Aspen to clear her head. Days of our lives when Nancy first returned to Salem all those months ago, we never would have guessed that she'd break our hearts not just once but twice. It's time for the show to fix the tragedy that her life's become and bring her back from the brink, but not in the way some fans are clamoring for. In a soaps. Com exclusive. Paul Telfer delved into the never-ending push and pull that is Sanders' life as the actor prepared viewers for the rarest of scenes. Is Days of Our Lives moved to Peacock just the beginning? Greg Rickart, Leo, has a dire prediction about the future, but luckily there is a silver lining to be found. Katie McLean has been delivering a heart-rending performance as the grieving Jennifer, but her scenes mourning Abigail may have hit a little too close to a real-life tragedy. We know that soap opera fans occasionally have a few words they like to say to their favorite show's writers, but Deidre Hall, Marlena, had something else to give to Days of Our Lives head scribe Ron Carlovati. Days of Our Lives poured on the heartbreak as Clyde's killer nature was finally exposed to all of Salem. But Curtis can't help wondering in this week's column if we're finally going to get some healing or just more tragedy. What went down last week? Chad brought Clyde at gunpoint to Abigail's grave, where Clyde confessed that Belle was his intended victim, but Abigail was the only one home. Clyde strangled Chad, but he arrived and shot him. Despite their best efforts, Clyde survived. Chad then said a tearful goodbye to a vision of his wife. After taking a pill, Jennifer had her own visit with Abigail and got behind the wheel of a car that may have run Gwen over. Gwen survived with no idea of who hit her, but Jack connected the dots. Stefan got his shares back from Gabby and plotted to win Chloe back. Rex returned and connected Kayla, Kate, and Marlena's illness to Romans from 25 years ago. All they needed to create the cure was a rare orchid, which Rolf revealed to Kristen he had. General Hospital The way we look at the attacks in Port Charles will change this week when Diane wakes up and reveals a shocking detail. Might the info she shares send the investigation into an entirely different direction? In a word. Definitely, Sunny's been undergoing some changes lately, and we don't mean for the better. Because at the end of the day, his latest scheme just makes no sense. Could Finn's wife finally shed some light on the hazy mystery of Elizabeth's past? While we wait to find out, we've got the answers to a few of your burning questions about Reiko. Join us in paying tribute to Nancy Lee Grant on the anniversary of her General Hospital debut with a gallery full of all things Alexis. And be sure to check out the hilariously unmissable excerpt of the actress' upcoming memoir in her own anniversary celebration. 
While we, impatiently wait for a game-changing spree a smooch, Nicholas Alexander Chavez shared an adorable kiss of his own that we just had to share General Hospital has been awash in secrets lately, and in this week's column, Dustin's got a feeling that they're all about to explode at once. From Sunny and Dex to the Hook's true identity, there's no way the show can keep the lid on everything for much longer. What went down last week, after Diane was found attacked by the Hook in Brando's garage, all eyes were on Dex, who was nearby when all three attacks occurred. Thanks to Finn developing an antidote to the toxin on the Hook, Diane had a fighting chance of pulling through. Sunny however had Dex strung up and tortured into confessing, but he insisted he was innocent. However, it was Joss who gave Sonny reason to pause and rethink his suspicions. After failing to use Lucy to get to Victor, Valentine and Anna finally gave in to their passion and made love. Later, Valentine realized Nina could be the key to getting access to Charlotte. Jordan confronted Portia over her suspicions that Trina was Curtis' daughter, and warned her to tell him the truth before he discovered it on his own. Maxie, Felicia and Mac pushed Cody to take a DNA test to learn if he was Mac's son or not. The young and the restless for years, we've watched Victor Newman manipulate those around him. Including family members. So why does his attempt to take over Chancellor Winters rub us the wrong way? It looks like all those months of rumors were true, Michelle Morgan is checking out as Amanda. The actress opened up about her decision and what Amanda's future may yet look like in Genoa City. As Trevor St. John joined the cast, he revealed that who he'd be playing was not what shocked him about the role. Uh-oh. It looks like there's far more to Audra than meets the eye, and we're pretty sure that means she's a threat to at least one couple in Genoa City. From the new opening credit photos to an audio version of the show, big changes are headed our way for a young and restless 50th anniversary. But there is one part of the Sudser that they absolutely cannot touch. The build-up to the show's 50th anniversary is hitting, almost, all the right notes for Candace in this week's column. But as juicy as things like the Adam slash Sally slash Nick triangle are, it's the thought of a downright shocking connection coming up that's really got her excited. What went down this week, Victoria and Billy told Johnny that Chelsea's his birth mother and it did not go over well. Adam was taken aback to hear the news but was more distraught to get confirmation that Sally and Nick were sleeping together. Ahead of Kyle and Summer's vow renewal, Diane kissed Jack and then retreated in embarrassment, only to find the mystery man who'd been texting her in her suite. Nikki returned from her LA trip with a photo of the Bentley Diane was seen riding in. Elena, unable to stomach Nate's plot against his family, moved into the Grand Phoenix, and Audra asked him out. Summer and Kyle's ceremony began at the Abbott Mansion with Phyllis and Diane vowing that nothing would spoil the day. In other news the Duttons are back, or will be when Yellowstone returns on November 13th, and they are stirring up more trouble than ever. Check out the spoiler-filled trailer for Season 5, but be warned, the very adult primetime drama uses a blue word or two in the promo, as Chicago Fire prepares to kick off its 11th season, we can't help but wonder what, or maybe that should be who is next for Gallo and Brett. Plus, check out our brand new photo gallery of the Chicago Fire stars and their real-life partners. Nearly four decades ago, All My Children sensation Marcy Walker took a huge gamble with Santa Barbara, and it ended up paying off big time. What's coming up? Now that you're all caught up on what went down last week, here's a glimpse of what's just around the corner. Pack some warm clothes and meet us at the airport, because this week, we're jumping on Bill Spencer's jet and flying to Aspen. And guess who's about to crash the party? No need to guess. You can just check out this bold and beautiful preview, this week on Days of Our Lives, Nancy comes face to face with someone she and Craig were pretty crappy to in the past. Plus, Chad is about to do something that won't go over well with some viewers. It wouldn't be a Genoa City wedding if things went as planned, right? But wait until you see what happens in this week's preview to throw Kyle and Summer's wedding into pure chaos. Plus, looks like we may finally find out why Noah was such a sad sack when he returned to town. And it wasn't just because he was mooning over Tessa. Take a look at our photo gallery of the best and worst of soaps.